Hello and welcome to GMBN Tech. So today we've come for a ride and we've equipped our bikes with the same tires, the same tread with the same width, same size. Almost mate, not everything is quite as it seems here because one of these sets of tires has only one compound and the other set has up to four compounds making it up. But what difference does that make in the real world? So we thought we'd come to the beautiful Forest of Dean on a sunny day to top up our tan lines and find out the real world implications. What are the benefits then of having four different compounds on your tyre? Is that not over-egging the pudding slightly? Well, what you can do is you can use each compound exactly where you need it. So you can have a firmer compound at the base of a knob to provide extra support or stability, while using a softer compound on the surface of the tyre to achieve better grip. That's very true. And actually that works across the width of the tyre as well, because you can have a firmer compound in the middle of the tyre for rolling speed, and on the edges a slightly softer compound to help with cornering grip. Exactly. So Henry, with fast XC rolling tyres like this, surely you want as firm a compound as possible? Well, that kind of used to be the accepted school of thought, but now there are more considerations at play. So how supple the tyre is, the width, the tread pattern, as well as the inclusion of modern super materials like graphene. It's all got the aim of giving you that grip that we talked about earlier on, but not compromising it in terms of rolling speed. I see, and I guess as a sort of a rider and racer alike then, that you're constantly striving not only for that fast rolling speed, but cornering grip as well. And like you said, if, a, if you have a softer compound on the edges, then that tire is gonna sort of mold itself to the ground. And then when you lean it back upright, you're gonna have that rolling pace there as well. Exactly. So Henry, I have raced my bike all over the world on many different terrains and in lots of different countries. And I can honestly say that actually having a tire with multiple compounds has been a great benefit. You know, you've still got that you know, rolling speed when I'm going flat out in a race run, but I know that the confidence is there when I lean it into a turn and I've got a nice softer compound on the side. So why are guys still making single compound tires? Well, it's like anything. I imagine it's probably actually pretty difficult to make a tire with one compound. To make a tire with two compounds probably is another element, another challenge. When you get to three and four, I imagine it requires a huge amount of expertise and toolage. And so you get tires that are mono compound, dual compound, or in these case, four compounds. And that option is really important because, you know, there's got to be a tire out there to suit all budgets and application. So we've got some comparisons planned for the day. And we're obviously trying to isolate the compound. So what are we keeping the same? Well, mate, we've got a few experiments lined up, like you said, but we are going to be using exactly the same width tyre. Obviously, both 29s. We've got the exact same wheel set on and the same width tyre, 2.25 barzos. But there is a difference, isn't there? There is. So they'll actually be using slightly different casings. This is because, sadly, we couldn't get the same tyre exactly, but we've got the casing pretty close. It's not About as close as we could go between a single compound and a four compound tire. It's also worth noting, we're gonna be actually swapping the disc rotors as we change wheel sets, just so there's not that added complication of the bike feeling different when it doesn't have to. That's true, and actually, it, as well, tire pressures will be the same between us, won't they? 26 up front, 30 out back. Exactly. So we've got three comparisons planned. We've got a braking test, a timed run, as well as something a little bit different later on. But let's go to this first test. Let's go, daddy-o. <laughs> So the braking test. Bang on. So that's pretty... Pretty close grouping. Pretty close if grouping. If you're a shooter, I'd say you've not done too bad. <laughs> okay, so that is the harder tyre on my run. And now, Rich, it's time for your turn on the softer and then we'll swap wheels. Sounds like a plan, let's do it. Well, I mean, that's as good as a first go. Yeah, that's a... So that's a really tight sort of tight cluster but the, probably the difference is probably about a foot the difference in mine on the harder compound is about a foot and a half which i think is quite negligible it's on fire you're you're aiming for them rocks aren't you i am you are i just hate 
good testing. Yeah. I'd much rather have a, give myself a way out by destroying the results we've had previously. In all seriousness though, although you did just run those over and bump them forward a touch, <laughs> you did actually stop in the same spots, give or take 15 centimeters every single time. Every single time. And so also, certainly consistency was, was very much there. Yeah, and it's consistently a bike length shorter. Yes. And if you think how sometimes how short, you know, in terms of short wheelbase turns and, yes. you know, between them. Really tight switchbacks or something. Mm, interesting. Well, now it's your turn. Let's get on up there. Yeah. I'll go get my trusty steed. So this was me on the harder compound on my bike, softer compound. Then Rich, this is Rich on the harder one and he's about to come up and do his last run. And that was him on the softer one. So you can see they're in similar grouping and Rich is just gonna come down now. And uh, we're gonna see, you know, where they sit with one another. Off you go. Right. Hold on the anchors. Oh. <laughs> Slightly longer on that one. So we've just done our braking comparison. And here you can see the harder compound for me and the harder compound for you. And out back, we've got softer and softer. Yep. Now actually this looks like there is a kind of a relatively similar distance, it's about a bike length. But why would there be any difference between my results and your results? I'm glad you asked Henry. So actually on my bike, I'm running a larger rotor. I'm running the 203 up front. So I do have a little bit more stopping power. But regardless of that, if you, like you said, sort of the, the distances between each grouping is equal. So regardless of brake size or brake rotor size, the stopping distances are the same between each compound. Now, obviously this isn't a too scientific experiment, no. but I think there is something to be taken from it. For sure. So now we're gonna go onto a racetrack. Yes. We're gonna do some timed runs. Yep. We're gonna do three runs each on the varying compounds. Now, no pedaling, because I know you've got a kick like a mule. So I want to, you know, recuse myself of that <laughs> excuse later on. Pump only. Pump only, but you know, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Cool, let's go for a spin. Yeah. So that was our race runs all wrapped up and some pretty interesting results, mm -hmm. which we'll get into later on. Yep. And now we've got something a little bit different planned. We do, a little surprise, don't we? A little surprise. So old mate Leo, who's the man behind the camera, yep. is actually changing our wheels. And we don't know what we're gonna end up on. No, no, we're not having a look. We're, it's gonna be a surprise sort of uh, test, if you like, a surprise uh, for both of us, what we're gonna have. And we're gonna have to see if we can tell the difference. Yeah, so we're gonna actually see if we can test on the trail and work out what compounds we're riding. Mm -hmm. So we're running the same rims, yep. same tyres, same pressures, etc. Interestingly enough though, a bit of extra legwork for Leo, 
he's going to have to change the brake rotors. Yes. But I'm sure you've got five minutes of good conversation in you. I mean, do you like motocross? Mm, Formula One. The hotels? Not quite. Liverpool winning the title. Fantastic. I, I'm actually really happy for them. Yeah. Yeah. This could be a long... Yeah. Yeah, maybe just silence is okay. Current affairs? Who? Didn't, don't worry. No, never met him. No, nice guy. Nice mm. guy, yeah. Oh, right. okay. No looking. And we're off. Yeah. That was a good ride, wasn't it, mate? Yes, that was our blind one, and we genuinely haven't looked. I'm trying not to look at no. your tyres. On three, we're going to say what tyre we think we're on. Yeah, okay. Okay, so one, two, three, one four C. C. How, how did you, what, before we look, why do you think you're on four C? Because, Henry, I just felt like I had, I know, it's very hard. I felt like I had quite good grip matching the front. Mm. And I've still got the four C on the front. I'm trying really hard not to look like. Yeah, yeah, but um, so, yeah. so 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 I know. Yeah. So I just think that that that's yeah. I went I went on a comparison with the front basically. I thought we did like a kung fu throwdown then. I know. But I felt that there was. It's not too much like it's not night and day, but there was a bit more scraping sound, under braking. Yeah. You know, that kind of you feel like instead of actually penetrating the dirt, it's kind of yeah. moving on top of the dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall we look? Go. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Nice. That would have undermined the whole video if we got it wrong. So, Leo, I thought Leo was trying to double bluff us. <laughs> Mind games. But that's very good, right. Let's have a sit down, take stock, and mm -hmm. get those race times. Sure. Stand yeah. lap times. <laughs> so, that is our day's riding. We've done some various little comparisons. The big one, of course, is the timed run. Out yes. in the real world, how yep. much difference does it make? Yep. So let's talk about the single compound tyre first. What, what were your times? So my first run was a 16, a one minute 16. Yep. Second was a one minute 13. And the third run was a one minute 11. One minute 11. So some consistently improving there. Yep, and all kind of similar grouping. I mean, the one is a bit of an outlier. Yeah. But you must have been trying extra hard. Yeah, as, as the timing, uh, so as the runs went on, I got more used to how the tire reacted, I suppose. So. Yeah. So I did 116, 117, 115. So, uh, okay. So probably about three or four seconds. Yeah, so if we, yeah, on average. On average, which I'll, I'll, I'll take, yeah. happily. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the four compound tyre, the multi-compound tyre, which yes. is more of a performance tyre. For sure. sure. So it's got the merits of rolling faster, but also cornering faster. Yeah. So yeah. How does that react? What were your times? So again, I did a 111 on my first run, which was equal to my fastest time on the 1C tyre, and then a 109 and a 109 again. So a fairly tight grouping, uh, consistency, but obviously noticeably quicker as well. Because mm, I did a 113, a 112, and then a 113. It's very tight together yeah, then. Yeah, but in also similar gap, like we did with the braking. Yes. But actually, it's a consistent gap between yep. us, which yep. maybe actually gives it a bit more validity. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, when you say braking, actually braking, really had nothing to do it because we weren't pedaling, so we weren't, mm. uh, it was pumping only, there was no pedaling, it was rolling off the start and that was it. Because what are your considerations when you're buying a tyre, you know, what, what, what do you think is actually important? Uh, I, I mean, straight line speed is good and useful if you're doing big epic days, big long, long rides, because that adds up over a long period of time, but from uh, a performance tyre, you really do want that, you know, that confidence in the corners that it's going to grip so having the softer compound on the edges is is very reassuring yeah totally. i mean we talked about it earlier on but for me braking is such a big part of it yep and actually having a tire that seems to 
When you ride harder compound tyres or, or single compound tyres, they often feel like they're scrubbing the surface off without actually penetrating and getting any traction. Uh, yeah, I agree, like more skipping over the top as opposed to biting into the ground. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I guess tread's got something to do with that as well, but sure. you did notice going between the single and the 4C today, Yeah, the, the noise was different. Yeah, you know? yeah, the feel, the noise, the way it was skipped on the gravel, like I said, mm. a little bit more. So, yeah, there's, there's, there is a noticeable difference. Like I said, in the timed runs as well, when you were really pushing it into a couple of the turns, you could really feel that 4C tyre just had that extra stability and yes. grip in it, for, you know, totally. without a doubt. It's funny, it only takes a little bit of slip to feel like a lot of slip. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. But that is it for this week's comparison on mm. GMBN Tech. Thank you very much for coming along, Richard. Thank you for having me on. Put me through my paces. <laughs> it's been really, really yeah. good. And thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts on the conversation between single, double, or even four compound tires. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.